Alright, so we're back here with TS-1000 number 2. And this one, the screen was okay. The keyboard, question mark, well, we knew what the question mark was, broken memory. So what we're going to do to make this one work again, besides trim the memory back and place it in here, is I'm going to remove the RAM chip, drop a socket in there, and I'm going to do the 16K upgrade to this one too. So the first thing I'm going to do is, uh, can I get this out? Let me get this out first. My soldering iron and my desoldering iron are warming up, so let me kill a few moments and see if I can pull this out. I don't want to come out. Oh, come on. You can do it. I have faith in you. Maybe not. Hey. Let's try this one. Hey, my tweezers just suck. Yeah, that's it. Your tweezers suck. Alright. My little bent screwdriver. Maybe I can wedge it out. There you go. It's got some wiggle to it. No, it's just wasn't flush to the circuit board when they soldered it, so it's got some play. Come on, you know you want to come in. You know you don't want to be in there anymore. You want to get out. You want to be free. There we go. You got that up. Alright, I think the soldering iron is hot enough now. Because what I need to do is I have to apply some solder to this. Where does this thing start? Right there to there. And then I can suction the solder out. It's kind of backwards, you would think, having to add solder to remove solder, but you have to do that. Let's just make sure I'm getting to the right one. That chip right there. Yeah, if there's not enough solder, the soldering, the desolderer, the solder sucker, won't have anything to get a purchase on when you desolder it. They got all these extra little solder pads here because this is designed either for a single 1K chip, a single 2K chip. I think they also had in mind even bigger than that. And then it is also it is designed for two chips. So I think it's two 1K chips or two 2K chips. They just wanted to be sure to cover their bases just in case they, I guess, depending on which chips they could get in stock. Come on, starter. Every now and then I want to stop and just check and make sure that I haven't moved out of, the, out of frame. And that you're just staring at my hand or the back of my head. I got mail. Alright, so there's that. Now I take my solder sucker. I'm gonna do the same thing here again. Put this here, suck it. When you push this on, you can feel when the solder gives up. Let's go. This one's going pretty clean. I wish I got to go back to get one. But when I put this down and I press against it, I can feel when the solder gets loose because the tip moves in. And at that point, I release it. Things work better if I'm going from left to right. 
Maybe. Maybe not. Let's try this way. I might have to put some more sour on this side. Some of these don't want to release it, looks like. All right, looks like we got a couple that I will need to drop a little solder on. I'll hold this up here. You can see there's like three or four that I had to put some solder on. Let's see you. You. That's it. Come back in here with the sucker. Okay, looks like I may have got more. Oh, one more here. All right, now it looks like I've got all of them. Move the solder out of the way. Let's see what the chip does now. I'm pretty sure the chip's not going to coat very easily, but let's just see how tight it is in there. What I'm doing is I'm heating up the pin to make sure it's not sticking to the side, and I'm using my other hand to gently pry the chip up so I can get it to release. Uh-oh, we have a trace lifting up here. How dare you, Trace? No, you don't. Get down there. We got a trace lifting up. I'm going to have to keep an eye on that one and fix that. Let's see what we got on the other side. Okay, looks like I'm going to have to hit this thing with a solid circle again. There we go. Got them out without lifting a trace. Now, we do have this one trace right here. I got to keep an eye on that one. Make sure that goes back where it belongs. Make sure I get that thing soldered in there right. Hopefully, I can get it in there correctly. So now I got them out. And all the holes came out pretty darn clean other than that one trace. So now I'm going to go get a socket and we'll put the socket in. And we'll unplug my solder sucker. Okay, so now I have the socket in on the other side, and I am going to just solder all the little connectors back in. I'm realizing that YouTube may have a content match go crazy on me because of the music in the background, so let me go check that real quick. There we go. I don't want the Clash getting all mad at me because I was playing Rock the Casbah while soldering stuff. You know, man, I could get, I could probably get like a, about a thousand more likes on this video if I have it. Yeah. And now what is that? I think it's Foreigner. I think it's Foreigner that's playing now. Yeah, it is. Watch YouTube say copyright infringement. I'll, I'll play with the background volume so that don't happen. 
I can just go in and just like mute the background when I'm not talking. So there we go. I got those all connected in. And the bad trace is right there. I don't know if you can see it, but the bad trace is right there and it goes in and connects there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my continuity, my multimeter. I'm just going to make sure that that trace is actually making connection to that pin like it's supposed to. One of these days I'll get a multimeter that actually makes noise, the continuity tester. So I don't have to check it by looking at it. So here's the bad trace there. Got a good connection there. Well, I got no connection. That's not a good thing. I may have to just fix it from the back. It's that trace right there. It's from that little pin right here. So it's there. And you need to connect. Yeah, I'm gonna probably I'm just gonna run a bodge across it. So I'm gonna stop the camera right now while I get some wire and I'm gonna run a connector across that to fix that. Alright, so I'm back. I got the wire there and then I got it crossing those two together, so I fixed the broken trace and rebuilt it, paired it. And this worked just fine. I'll throw a piece of tape on there to make sure it goes nowhere, but that works just fine. Next step I gotta do is set the RAM chip up. Okay, so what I've done is I hooked up four wires to D1, D2, D3, and D5. I'll put the diagram down below on which wires to hook up where and how. These wires are then connected. I'm just trimming off this little excess. I don't like seeing excess. I put a piece of black tape underneath just like I did on that fix there, just so nothing touches. Now these come over to the other side. And they connect on to the RAM chip. Notice I have four pins pulled out, and that's what they wire onto. I go my little handy dandy outline here, which I will put down in the description. What I gotta do is I gotta hook up the green one here, the yellow, the orange, and the red. And then that is done. So let's start trimming some wire. Let's just say, right, let's get this one off. I'm going to bring that one to about here. So it's you there. Get L scissors. Trim off the excess. Open the wires up. I like using color coded ribbon wire. For things like this. That way I can write down what colors go where and not make mistakes. And not make as many mistakes. Now I'm just going to pull off the insulation. The other nice thing about using this, the ribbon wire, is you can just pull the insulation off with your fingernails. The drawback to using the ribbon wire is the insulation melts really easy when you get soldering iron in it. And I don't think you got to see any of what I just did because I realized I pulled it off the camera. Alright, so now I'm looking at my diagram. Red's going to go up to the first one, 21. So let's get some, ins uh, some solder on here. Let's take red over to that one. Lose the glasses. And as I've said in many videos before, I apologize ahead of time if you get to see the back of my head while I'm doing this. Sometimes I lean over to see what I'm doing and I don't realize I ain't blocking the camera with that. I need more solder. Okay, those three are hooked up. Now the green goes across to that side. Sometimes it's hard to see what you're doing when you had all these silver traces in front of you that are reflecting back the light and the glare. I'm trying to see a silver wire while I'm looking at silver traces. I probably could have tinned it and made it a little easier. I should do that. You ever wonder what I'm doing every now and then you hear a tapping sound? That's me just tapping the side of the soldering iron against my the metal in the back of the bench that holds the light in the camera because that helps get the excess solder off this would be a pain in the neck today 
Let's flux you up. Let's get some nice clean flux and get some nice clean solder. Let's get a connection going here and get it all away. There. Enough already. Got it. Okay. So that's done. We're done with the soldering iron. So let's unplug the soldering iron. Let's clean up our mess and we're going to come back and we're going to work on the keyboard. Alright, so now what I got to do is I got to trim back this keyboard because first off it's broken there. But even worse, it's broken there. I'm tempted to try a trick on that. But since I'm not going to be able to do about the e equal lengths, I'm going to take this one all the way back past that break. Basically all the way down here. And get that excess piece of plastic out of the way. Alright, now it's going slow because I didn't want to cut over into that. And get a nice clean edge on this one here. So that connector is fine. Now this one on the other hand, that break there, that's an issue. First off, let's try a trick. We're going to try, I said we're going to try a trick. We're going to try and trim this thing straight. Okay. Then I'm going to cut the excess down. Also. And trim the rest of that off. There. There. Now I have some more. I got room to play. Now the trick I want to try is you can test these. Just so you know, you can test. If you have a continuity, meter, let me zoom out a little so you can see what I'm doing here. If you have a continuity meter, see the little thing moves when I touch? You can test membranes by going on the inside. You touch that one and touch that one. See, that one's broken. That one's not broken. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. That one's not. So I got four broken, four good ones. This one I tested already. That one's good. Now, I'm kind of curious, can I fix this? What I'm thinking of doing is I'm thinking of taking a piece of little piece of wire and laying it across that and putting some tape on it. Will that work? Probably not. But will it hurt to try? Otherwise, I'm going to have a very short piece here trying to shove the piece in. Come on, I might be able to get that one. See, the issue you have is this gets in your way. You really can't get in there very well with that. So, my thought is, can I try to fix that first? So first off, let me get a piece of tape and put it on the other side. You want to stop from ever breaking anymore. Uh, I'm going to use just clear tape. Some clear scotch tape. Well, I guess I'm not going to use clear scotch tape anymore. I had one little piece left on it. Seriously. I got packing tape and I got masking tape. I guess I'll use packing tape. Early. And then I got to find the end of the packing tape. Looks like I need more shipping supplies. I need a new tape holder too. I've only been using this one now for seven years. This is one of those freebies that come with the tape. When you buy tape, you get this little plastic tape holder. And I said, well, why do I need to buy another one? This thing works just fine. And I've been using it since. So, what I do is I take a piece of tape, I lay it down in here where it's broke, secure it down so that this is being held together so that it won't come apart any further. And I don't want you in my way. You're getting caught on here. Then I'm going to take a razor blade, trim off the excess along the edge of the membrane.
One of my other ZX81s, I said it properly, had an issue where one column, I, on my previous video where I'd, I was working on the last one on the um, um, repair number one, which was actually part three, uh, <laughs> or part two, part three. Um, what I was doing is I was working on that, and I went to test my original ZX81, the one that I put the, did the LED mod on, and I found out that I have a whole column that wasn't working. And I found out that the center of this 5-pin one, the center one, was not making contact. But if I got up inside the system and put a little pressure on it, it made contact again. So, I wedged a piece of napkin up in there, and voila, it worked. So, I know, you might be saying, why are you cob jobbing it or jury rigging it or whatever you want to call it? Because I can. Because I don't mind. It's my stuff. I do as I want. It's my toy. I want to play with my toy my way. I'm just seeing if I got lucky with any of these. No, I didn't make any contact with them. Alright, so now I'm going to chase down a little piece of wire. First off, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this right here and get you out of my way. Get me a piece of my non-existent leftover scotch tape. And take this here. Just so it's not flapping over here in my face. And then, and you, I'm going to do the same with another piece of that leftover scotch tape. I'm going to put you in here. So now everything's been... I want to make everything held down in place. Nice and flat, right there. Okay, so now, I'm going to chase down some wire. I'm going to try something here. So I'm going to go off camera and get that, and then I'll come back if it works. If it don't work, I'll show you how it didn't work. All right, I've done some delicate surgery using some very thin wire and some tape and such. And it may be hard to see, but see what I did? Is I applied, I applied wires to those four broken traces and they're held in place by tape. And just to show you that they work, I'm putting this over here so you can see. I'm going to, I want to show you, I'm going to test Here's a trace that is was not broken. This one was broken. That one was broken. That one was broken. That one was broken. See, they all work now. Now I just got to reinforce this with some better tape. Maybe a piece of a uh, piece of super duct tape. And you may be like, well, why not just pull it out? Remove that and put a new one in because I don't want to buy a new one if I can get by With my hobby Just making do I'll make do some people are collectors They like to collect pristine stuff and stick them on the shelf Let's zoom this back out just so you can see where I'm at here They like to collect pristine stuff and stick them on the shelf Some people are users I'm a user, as I said before. I like to use things. And if they break, I like to fix them. I, the thrill of fixing it is sometimes a lot better than actually what it looks like when I got done fixing it. So that's how I fix that. That might be the first one I've ever done like that. I don't know. If you know anybody who's done something like that similar, let me know in the comment. Right now, I'm going to take this super heavy duty Gorilla tape, which does not like to be cut with scissors. So I'm going to get the razor blade. I'm going to slice it off. Give me a fresh piece to work with. See, this is some really strong stuff, which is why once I get it on there, I should never have an issue with it coming off. Coming loose. How long do you need to be? It's like this six million dollar man. We can make him stronger than he was. Faster. Better. Oh no, whatever else it was too. I don't want to copyright infringement on that one. But there we go. We have now patch that. And that tape is so friggin' strong, it ain't gonna break. 
And you know, I'm just going to test again just to be sure. I don't want to put everything back together, then plug it all in and find out that oops. I just want to make sure my stuff is. I'm still getting good contact all along. Everybody's good. All right. So now I'm going to try to put it back together. Let's take off my tape I have holding everything in place. See? That'll work good. It's got some flex to it, just enough. It doesn't have to have a lot of flex there. The other option was to cut it very, very short and then try to squeeze it in here. And I've done that before, and you end up having to do is you have to remove the regulator. Or the heat sink from the regulator so that you have room enough to flip it over after doing it. it. It's a real pain. But this way, I can still do it the right way. Or the one way. That heat regulator does get, or the heat, yeah, heat regulator does get in the way. I'm doing a lot of things. So here we go. I'm going to do this now. I'm going to leave the camera on, but you may not, you know what? I'm going to turn the camera off. That way I don't have to worry about my head hit, it being in the way. I'll be back. All right, I did some testing off camera, and this membrane is basically shot. It's so fragile, it keeps cracking everywhere. I even threw some more tape on it to hold it in place, and this one's falling apart inside. So this is going to probably be the same thing I did with the other one. See how they don't even want to hold them. But you can see here, see how this is just cracking up? Well, maybe you can't see it, but it's just falling apart. This is awesome, though, that that little patch worked. I could attempt that patch. There. See? Yeah, yeah, you can see they're falling apart and they're cracking. I could attempt that one. I may be able to. Let's see. Does this tape I put on here to support, is this going to come off without tearing the membrane off? Or is this like an oops? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can see how bad that was. All right, so I guess what I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to trim this thing short. And I'm going to do the same mod that I did on the other one where I pull this off. Maybe I'll just pull the one. I can just get away with one of them. Just do the one short and the other one long for now. Yeah, I'll do that. So I'm going to hold that for tomorrow because I have to go run and do some things. Light calls. But we'll fix that. We're going to pull that one. Pull that off. Put it on here. Don't twist the wires this time like we did last time. This one I'm going to leave alone because this is working. My little jury rig patch worked, and I'm kind of proud of the fact that that little patch worked. All right, so I decided not to wait till tomorrow. Figured get it done now and then leave. So what I did is I removed the connector off the motherboard, and I added a ribbon cable out to it. And that way, since I trimmed this way back to pass all the damage, that way it'll work. And I'm just waiting for the glue gun to heat up. I'm going to take the hot glue gun and I'm just going to put some hot glue here just to protect the bare wire so that it doesn't touch up against the shield and short something out. So once that glue gun heats up, I'll do that and then we'll put it back together. Alright, so I got the membrane plugged in there. And I got that plugged into the little piece right there. Now I'm going to put a screw in it, and I'll test, and if she works, then I will move the camera over to the desk, and we will show you that it works. If it don't work, then I'm definitely going to pick up on this tomorrow. Yep. I just pop my connector off, trying to move it to a better position. Okay, well I, I may end up having to take a piece of it. This is a duct tape to hold it in place. I was going to actually do that. Take a piece of Z duct tape. This is Frankenpooter 2. Return of Frankenpooter. There. Now I put that on that. This wire over there out of the way. Make sure it's not going to hit nothing. It's not hitting anything. that I can see. If this one don't work, it may be a point where I'm actually going to have to order a membrane for this one. If I end up having to order a membrane for this one, I might end up ordering a membrane for the others and just say, you know what? Since I gotta buy one, I'll buy a bunch. I don't know what happened to all my screws. I'm out of screws. 
have to go in my bucket of bolts and see if I can find some screws to work with. Let me just check and make sure. Okay, it's not going to. I'll give it a shot. We'll see what happens. All right, so we're back over here at the table, at the desk now. Over here at the desk. And here's my computer, too. I put the case on the bottom. I wiped it down a little bit. Yeah, it's nice to show that. All the columns are working. And maybe I didn't want to hit that. Don't hit enter. And all the rows are working. So Frank and Pooter 2 is working now. She needs some screws. And she needs some feet. And she needs a better cleaning. And she needs a 16K badge, which I'm gonna my wife's gonna print up for me. And we're gonna put them on this one, and this one, and this one. They all have internal 16K. So there we go. What we have left now is Frank and Pooter 1, the original, the mess. This one's gonna be a beast. I'm gonna make I'm gonna do the composite mod on this one if I can figure it out. I'm going to, hey, I got mail. I'm going to hook up the Texas Instrument keyboard to it. And this one's going to be the beast. But um, it's nice to say that all three are now working. All three have 16K inside. And I just need, uh, like I said, some screws. And I need some rubber feet for those two. I think I need rubber feet for all of them. This one need rubber feet. That one needs rubber feet. Oh, this one has rubber feet already, so I just need rubber feet for two of them. So there we go. Hope you enjoyed this little series, and I will return with Frank and Pooter, the original, once I decide what I want to do with that one. Something else I want to explore in this series is this mess of stuff. These plug into the, ZX, the ZX81. This is 64K. This is an extra 64K. This is a mapper that lets you map them. This is a ROM card. This is a Centronics parallel card. This is a serial port. This is a monster. All these things plugged into the back of there. I'm going to eventually figure out how to play with these things and see what we can do with them. Now the big beast up there. But as I said before, thanks for watching. And I'll do some more ZX81 time mixing player 1000 stuff as we go on. It was a great computer. It was the first computer I ever owned. Have a great day.